Don't be afraid, it's just a ghost. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load, and it's been, wow, a good few years since I have had a brocock on the table. Oh my God, I can't even think when the last one that landed on here was. It was ages ago, ages ago. Pfft, what model was it? Oh, I'll have to dig dig back into the uh, playlist to see what uh, what model it was. But here we have one of the latest ones from Brocock, which is a British made rifle. So it's kind of nice to have this on the table. The Brocock Ghost. This is kindly on loan from a friend of mine who watches the channel. So big thanks to him for the loan gone. Slightly, well I say slightly tricked out. It's got a Sabre Tactical Rail on here and it's got, I don't even know what make that mod is. BPO uh, moderator on there. So you don't get that and you don't get the mod and you don't get the rail. And obviously you don't get the wolf scope with the rifle, but this is a sub 12 177 rifle and it is pretty damn accurate considering the wind that I have been shooting this thing in today. So first of all, let's just jump in and just uh, give you some specs. Now I'm just reading this off Brocox website, so I'm not gonna go sort of too techy, but I'll just read up the specs mainly for the, the sub 12. This rifle is available in 17722 two five and 30 cal okay i think the 30 cal goes up to 95 foot pounds but this one like i say is a sub 12 177 and shots per fill in this sub 12 version you're talking around 290 shots okay in two two you get around 300 so that's pretty damn good maximum energy in foot pounds um you know if you have it cranked up as in uh, an fac rated version 177 will go between 14 and 18 foot pounds the 22 will go between sort of 25 and 35 foot pounds at maximum power uh, those power settings the shots per charge will be 120 in 177 and 130 in 22. okay the overall length of this rifle is 655 millimeters weighing in at 3.1 kilograms that's pretty much it for your specs you can change the barrels on these you can change the calibers kind of like fx it, it does a look, look a little bit sort of impacty, you know, but a lot of rifles do these days. But I've been very, very impressed with this Brocock. It's just nice to have a British made gun on the table. So let's take it from the top and we'll dig deep and I will tell you all about it. So, well, we'll just do it the usual rack style. So, you can adjust this uh, butt pad. I think it just goes up and down. Uh, I didn't mess with it, but you can. It'll slide up and down. There is a little bit of Picatinny rail on the bottom if you want to put some sort of uh, monopod or anything like that. Finger grooves in the stock here so you can pull it in if you desire. There is an adjuster there. That's uh, I think that's the hammer spring adjuster or power adjuster. On the sub 12, it's not really relevant, so obviously I've not touched it. Magazine goes in here. I'll show you the mags. So I do quite like these magazines. So this is the 177 magazine, and they have like a door on them like this. So you open them up like that, and you basically crank it all the way around, put your first pellet in, which locks it, and then fill it all up, and then close it up and then to drop it in you've got to obviously cock the rifle open it up but the magazines just push in like that so even a lefty like myself it wasn't too obtrusive although the cheek piece is um sort of righty orientated okay in fact would i be right in saying that this magazine goes in either way because if it does i'm not gonna oh i suppose oh, do you know what 
I think you can. I think I've failed here and not switched it around to Ambi. So, yeah, shame on me for doing that, but it looks like this thing will be totally ambidextrous just by switching around the cheek piece and putting in the magazine that side. I didn't do it because it's not my gun. I didn't want to start stripping stripping it down and stuff. But uh, but yeah, there you go. But the magazines are pretty good. Uh, 177, what we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Looking for some uh, in 177. Uh, I think it's... I've not got... It doesn't say on here, but... There's going to be a few less, aren't there, on the uh, 2 2. But no, I like the magazines. Uh, it's got a magnet there as well, which sort of pulls it in, locks it in. I had no issues with the mag whatsoever. So, really, really good. So, it's ambidextrous. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Leave me alone in the comments. So, you can swap it around. So it is fully ambidextrous. There is a cross bolt safety. I'm going to put the safety on because it is cocked now. I do like that, although it is a little noisy if you're out hunting, but I suppose you can sort of just do it like that. But I'm going to leave that on. You have, uh, it is obviously regulated, uh, aluminium um, chassis. So let's give it a magnet check. Yeah, all aluminium on the chassis, rock solid, adjustable trigger blade there. There is your regulator pressure uh, there. And here is your bottle pressure right there. Okay. AR-15 style uh, pistol grip. I like that. I like the one that's on it. It's pretty, pretty grippy. Um, you've also got a bit of uh, storage in there. I think I didn't really sort of look at it but you uh, you can sort of pop open these um these pistol grips and chuck stuff in there if you wish uh, but obviously it's to get it the the bolt to get the grip off would i swap that out no probably wouldn't so you know that it's it's nice it's comfortable grip um plenty of room in the trigger guard like i said adjustable blade there so you can sort of alter it if you want I love the cocking lever on this rifle. And this what struck me about this rifle is how nice and how smooth the cocking action of this rifle is. Really, really nice. I like what they've done with the cocking lever there. Filled it full of holes just to sort of lessen the weight. And not only that, it looks cool as well. I wonder if you can actually unscrew it and use it as a muzzle brake. No, you probably can't. Um, rail here, Picatinny rail. You've got Picatinny rails on the side as well for accessories. And it comes with a carbon fiber shrouded barrel, which looks really nice. Looks really cool up against the uh, carbon fiber wrapped aluminium bottle. So really love that. Obviously you can throw on a mod. Um, my friend who's very kindly lent me this rifle has thrown on, what, what mate did I say it was? A BPO, I think it's a BPO, BPO mod. So that worked quite uh, effectively, nice and silent. Um, just a, a real nice rifle to shoot. It was, it was nice. Like I say, it's been an age since I have fired a Brocock rifle and I've particularly enjoyed shooting this one. Nice combination with this chunky wolf scope. This is a 4.8 to 26 times 56. So it's a monster of a scope uh, held on with element rings. What an awesome combination. Really, really nice. Now, how did this thing perform? Now, it was dead windy when I was shooting this. So let me just get my excuses out of the way from the bat. Yeah, it was windy and I'm left-handed. So these are three shot groups with a variety of pellets at 30 yards. Here we go, boom. I will roll in footage in that corner. So first of all, so these are the different shot strings here. First of all, I used HNN 
field target trophy and these are kind of like my go-to um, test pellet now so love H&M pellets so that was what we used okay they are 8.64 grains in 177 these are the groups that I got three shot groups finger for scale at 30 yards okay not bad not bad at all next one was uh, air arms diablo field those ones are 8.4 grain let me show you those okay they did all right as well not bad at all three shot groups again in between changing pellets guys i did just put a few shots through just to get the barrel sort of used to those pellets so to speak but nice groups there cloverleaf groups mostly very nice then i used h&m barracuda lights which are these here these are 9.57 grain Let's show you them okay use them and again decent you know you've got to take out the human factors here and the wind okay not bad at all not bad 30 yards again guys then i used rws super domes these are a classic pellet 8.3 grains use those and they again perform well mostly clover leaf groups okay nice and then i used something a little bit different just throw it all in the mix some norma golden trophy hefty ft heavy 9.1 uh, grain pellets those ones are those work well again nice group there nice group there mostly clover leafing so do you know what 30 yards there's not much to moan about there and it was windy guys it was windy now i did try some h&m 177 slugs uh it didn't really like them um because i think the first shot literally went in fact that was it i was aiming up here and they just dropped so low it wasn't i weren't going to re-zero for them so i was like oh, do you know what? I'll, I'll leave slugs for a little bit because when i tried them on a gong they were going a little bit erratic so i don't think the barrel in this particular rifle likes slugs in the sub 12 version so it was just a bit of an experiment but um but no that's that's how it was but no pretty damn accurate we cannot argue about those groups these are my test groups by the way guys when i was sort of just uh, swapping pellets so just ignore those but decent group or groups so i'm happy with that it's an accurate rifle it's simple as that now we have got it cocked so let's pull that trigger see what it is doing it felt a real nice trigger see what she's doing <laughs> one pound 14.4 ounces on the trigger that is a nice trigger i need to remind myself actually yeah nice trigger just a great looking gun guys real nice looking gun is it a bit heavy uh, it's not much different to like a an impact i mean you've seen my impact guys my fx impact i've got literally everything you can fit on that and it weighs a ton um so are there better options for hunting i don't know you just get a bit you'd get a sling on the go wouldn't you or you just if you're shooting off a, a bipod or a tripod that you know shooting stationary then it don't matter about weight does it uh, I haven't got the manual for this rifle because, uh, like I said, this is on loan from my friend. But you do get a hard case with it. So all the, the hard cases are pretty much the same these these days. But that, that's the uh, that's the hard case. Um, 
so yeah, it's accurate. It's good looking. Um, it's it performed really well. Uh, pretty damn consistent as well. I took the chrono on it. I'll uh, roll in some footage now. Uh, and it would seem pretty accurate. I'll put the data at the bottom of the video uh, in, in the details of the video down below with my actual chrono data. So refer to that or I'll chuck it on screen, whichever. Um, so pretty consistent. Uh, I think I did a 10, 10 shot screen, I think I did. Um, really, really nice. It's just, just performed really well. So really happy um, with how this rifle went. Just, just a good looking rifle. It'd be nice to get a firearm rated version just to give that a whirl, see what it's like. But no, not bad at all, guys. Quite an, an impressive rifle. I think they're around the same sort of money as like, for example, you know, a competitive option is like an FX Impact. You know, it looks pretty much like it. You can swap barrels out, blah, 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 blah. So that another option, or do you just want to buy British? If you're from the UK, you want a British rifle. I've not used a massive amount of the Brocox. I've used a few, um, but like I said, this is the first one I've used in a long time and I've been very impressed with this. So I would like to get my hands uh, on more of these uh, rifles, get them here on the rack table in the rack cave. But yes, gets a thumbs up from me. It's performed really well, accurate, good looking. No, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the rifle. I'm going to leave it at that, guys. Thanks for watching. That is Rack and Load. See ya.